Hello my friends, today we will talk about the denoise tool into Luminar Neo. Before we get to Luminar Neo, I have these photos of Eddie the chipmunk and we will, I chose one of the images actually for us to edit and I decided to go with this one. Now I do want to denoise this image. If we look, I shot it at ISO 640 so it does have some noise. If I go at 100% you will see the image, it is pretty grainy and I do want to denoise it. So I will do that on Luminar Neo and show you exactly how the denoise tool works. But before we go into Luminar Neo, I want to put this photo actually in Photoshop because after we are done denoising the image and editing it, I want to further um, edit it in Photoshop or not so much edit it. I just want to change the composition a little bit because as you can see, I want the chipmunk to be straight up and if I go here to crop and I will straighten up the chipmunk so the legs are all on the same uh, plane, then I'm losing a lot of my background on the top and I do not want that. I want his eye to be on my rule of thirds line and for that I need to expand the background a little bit and I will do that in Photoshop and I will show you how that is done. So this would be more like a two-on-one tutorial. We'll use Luminar Neo to edit this photo and denoise it. And then in Photoshop, we will readjust the composition because I kind of messed up with this composition. I do like the image, but I do need more headroom. So this is a completely raw image. As you can see, this is the ARW, which means it's a raw image. I shot it with my Sony A1. 1 320 of a second f 6.3 shutter speed and ISO 640. I'm sorry, shutter speed was 320 and f 6.3 was the aperture. All right, I started with my 2 to 600 millimeter at 600 millimeter. Now that we have this image in Lightroom, I will go Command E to send it into Photoshop because that's the place we want to end up in the end to readjust the composition and expand the background. Now that I have this image into Photoshop, I'll go Command J to duplicate it and then I will go to Filter, Skylum Software, Luminar Neo and we will do our edits and denoising into Luminar Neo. Now I need to tell you, I never really used the denoise in Luminar Neo or Lightroom really because there is something lacking in there. When you denoise an image in Luminar Neo, you do not have the option to add sharpness to it. And by denoising it, you are softening the image. And I just really don't like that so much. And that's why if you've seen my videos in the past, you will know I use Topaz Denoise and I use that on pretty much almost every image. But here we are in Luminar Neo. I'll go Command 1 so you can see this at 100%. As you can see, the focus was nailed on the eye and we do have some noise in the eye. We do have some noise in the background, quite a little bit of noise actually. And uh, let's take care of this noise first. The denoise, it's uh, into the essential panel and it's right over here. Now, when we talk about noise in a photo, there's really two types of noise. There's luminosity noise and there's color noise. Luminosity noise is this, this exact kind of noise. It's kind of just grain. It has no color to it. It's a gray scale grain. And then color noise is more like the chromatic aberration where it has like some purple, some yellow, some green, some all kinds of colors. And truth be told, lately on the newest cameras and lenses, you will probably not get much of color noise at all. Most of the time you will just see luminosity noise. I've been, you know, using cameras now. I've been photographing things for the last seven years and I've never really had color noise in my images. It's always been luminosity noise. If you have a way older camera, then you might get some color noise, but for me, it's just luminosity noise. When you look at noise, you will most likely find it into the sky or your background and usually in the darker spots into the shadows you will often not find noise into the bright parts. If we look here on his white fur around the mouth, you can't really see noise. Usually in the darker spots is where the noise is hiding. So now we know 
we do not have color noise, we have luminosity noise, how do we fix it? Well, in 2D noise, we have luminosity slider. And if we move this to 100%, just like that, then you will see the noise completely disappear and we have a very smooth photo. Look right here into the eye. Let me see if I can put this at 200% so you can really see it. So look at the catch light, at the reflection right here into the eye. It is very smooth, no grain at all. So if I do the before, it's very grainy and after very, very smooth. But with that, look at the four around the eye right here where the eyebrow is. Right now with the luminosity at 100, everything is kind of just meshed in together. So it became very blurry. Where before we did have some hair definition and now we're just losing that. So you never want to go to 100 because it's just going to make your image soft. So back it up and usually most of the images, if you shot it with some ISO of, let's say, you know, 300 to 1000, your luminosity will be, for noise remover, will be somewhere between 20 to 40, and that will do a good enough job. So here is at 19, you can still see some grain over there, but if I move it at 25, that pretty much take care of it, of most of it, still a little bit. Let's see, 31 gets cleaner, but this is just a balancing act. Now you have to decide how much of a clean image do you want, how much of that noise you want to remove, and how much detail are you losing, are you willing to lose. Now this is a reason why I don't usually use the denoise on Lightroom or Luminar Neo, because you cannot bring back details and that's why I use Topaz Denoise. I'm not sponsored by them. I do not have affiliate links. I just love their product. And when you use Denoise and to, to denoise your image, when you use Topaz Denoise, you remove all the noise with very, very little amount of lost detail. In fact, sometimes your images are sharper after you denoise it just because they do automatically apply some sharpness to them. So, Let's see all the sliders. If we have the luminosity denoising over here, which we just used. This is if you have color denoise, then you can use the color slider instead of the luminosity. And then you have advanced settings, which is just boost, which means if you need more denoising, then you can use this to boost your denoising. One um, use of the denoise tool, which is not meant for it, but I use it is when I want to soften the background or just make something, you know, more pleasing to the eye, the background usually. And that's when I will increase the luminosity, the color and the boost all the way to 100. And then you're just blurring the background or getting this soft look. And here is the before and after. So I'm going to move these sliders back and let's just go with luminosity maybe to around 45, that we still have some noise in there. It didn't really do that good of a job. This is the before and after. Maybe I will add some boost to boost some of that luminosity noise remover. And that did a lot better job. This is our before and after, before and after. Now I do want to keep this lower part of the eye pretty sharp because when people are looking at an eye, Usually they want to make sure it's in focus and it's sharp. So this one will be giving it away if we blur it too much. So I will just use a brush and erase this denoise effect just from underneath the eye, just to bring back a lot of details there and show that our picture, it is indeed very sharp. And this is our before and after, before and after. Now, mind you, this is a 200%. You will never really edit images at 200%. Usually you want to be at 100%. So this is what it looks like at 100%. This is the before and after. Before and after. And I think that did like magic. It worked really well. Great. Now we removed the, the, the noise. Let's just do a basic edit on this. And then move on to Photoshop so we can expand the background. I'm going to increase the exposure. Increase the contrast a little bit. Bring down the highlights open the shadows, move to the black and whites, J to show my clipping warnings, and then I will increase the whites 
not too much but maybe this much and bring down the blacks just a little bit great we are doing good let's see our image j to hide my clipping warnings and this is our image before and after before and after and that looks better i also want to add a little bit of maybe vibrance not so much saturation but i will increase the vibrance and that improves our image overall this is without and with the vibrance without and with oops without with just a little bit of vibrance that helps a lot I'm really not going to do anything else to this image because this is not so much of an editing tutorial. It's more about removing noise and also extending the background. So now I'm going to apply all these changes we did in Luminar Neo and we will go back into Photoshop and I will show you how to expand the background. All right, so this is our image before we took it in Luminar Neo and this is after before and after i am going to flatten this image i'm just going to use this tk8 uh, plugin to flatten it by pushing this button if you do not have a tk8 panel you will just right click on the image and just go to flatten image but because i have the tk8 i use it all the time so i'll just click on flatten great now we have a flatten image i'll go command j to duplicate it again because i like to work non-destructively and I will go to my crop tool and now I really want to straighten this image something like that and I do want like I said before I want the eye to go into the upper thirds of this image so I will go to something like that and that looks great to me and I will click enter ah you know what you guys all right We'll do this one. I could have clicked the content aware and Photoshop would have filled in these blank layers, but we did not do that. So we will do a different method. So here we go. In order to fill in this blank uh, pixels now, I will go to my rectangular marquee tool and I will select top part of my image without selecting his ears, just the background and then command J to duplicate that exact layer. You see, I have the layer over here. If I turn these ones off, I just have that top background. And now with that top background selected, I'll go command T to transform it. And I will just stretch it upwards until it fits my screen, something like that. And then accept the changes. So we fixed the top part. Now we have to do the, the right side of the image. We have to make a stamp layer and for that I will do command option shift E and now we have a stamp layer of our image which is a picture of everything we've done below and now I will use my marquee tools tool as well and select this part of the background make sure I do not get his whiskers and then command T to transform it and you know what I should have uh, do command J to duplicate it, put it on its own layer, but you know what? We'll do it this way, just like that. And accept the change. Command D to deselect, and we fixed that side. And now we are left with just this very, very tiny corner over here. So we'll make another stamp layer, command option shift E. And then with our marquee tool, I will just get the background selected, command J to duplicate it, command T to transform it, and I will drag it down a little bit. And there you go. Now we completely change our background and we have a better composition. We have a lot of layers here, so I will flatten it again. And now with the image flattened, I will go to file, close and save. And this will send my image back into Luminar Neo. So this is our image after we removed the noise, we added the Luminar Neo and we extended the background into Photoshop. This is the before, this is the after, before and after, before and after. And I think we came a long way. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyler Ewing and I will see you in my next video.